Alright, welcome to unit 5.3, continue. Now, as this unit starts, we want to talk a little bit about conservation of energy. And for all useful purposes, we can practically say energy is not created or destroyed, although technically that's, that's not 100% true. Uh, anyway, but you'll have to get into like a unit on radioactivity and that kind of stuff to get to that point. But anyway, where conservation of energy comes in, here's the thing. We can really do every single problem that we work almost just by doing this. This is the most beautiful equation in this entire unit because here's the thing. All you have to know is what kind of work is being done in a problem. Is somebody pushing something? Well, if somebody's pushing something, then we've got an FS. So we've got just a plain old-fashioned work being done. Is something falling up or down? Well, that means you've got gravity taking place in this problem. So we've got an MGY initial minus an MGY final. Is there a problem with a gigantic bungee cord? Well, that's nothing but a spring, so that means we can include this, 1 half mv squared minus 1 half mvo squared. Now, all these forces, these are what's kind of referred to as a conservative force. Those are conservative. But we can look at certain types of like resistive forces. Resistive. We can take it like something, for example, like friction. And in the case of friction, friction usually doesn't help you to push something. This is what's known as non-conservative force. So non-conservative force, something like friction, well, we can just write work is equal to, and since this isn't adding energy to a system, work done by friction, we can just write is equal to negative. I'm going to write a little f, just like that. And now don't forget, f at this point is nothing but the equation mu n. Uh, n is n if it's usually equal either to mg or it's mg cosine of theta if you're ever on a hill or something. But anyway, so there is where the n comes in. So any problem with a friction, we treat it as a work, but we just write a negative in front of it because it's going to lose energy. And if you opened a parachute, it would be the same thing. If somebody had a parachute attached to them, they were falling from the sky. That parachute is actually removing energy. So that force of that parachute is a negative for Fs. So the work by the parachute could be negative Fs. So that's the only little trick we got to kind of pay attention to. But if you can find the type of work, is somebody being pushed? Are they going down the hill? Are they attached to a giant rubber band? Is there air resistance? Or maybe something's rough that they're sliding over. You find which of these types of work are present here. In other words, you could have work being done by plain old-fashioned force. You could have work being done by gravity. You could have work being done by spring. You could have work being done by friction. And the result is all that work, since energy is not created or destroyed, this is why I love this chapter. We can do so much because all we need is the work net equation. You find what type of work, set it equal to delta Ke, which usually gets written as 1 half mv square minus 1 half mvo square. And the next thing you know, we are working so many different types of problems. All right, let, let's go ahead and skip and see what some of these problems look like. Let's go ahead and do one. So we've got a diver dropping off of a diving board. I guess it's kind of like this picture here. A diver comes off a diving board. They're 10 meters. You use conservation of mechanical energy to find the speed 5 meters above the water. So let's take a look at this diver. They're jumping off of a platform. So here's the diver. And so they're going to jump off this. I probably wouldn't do it because I can't swim. But hey. You know, that's just part of it. Here's the water down here. Uh, it says that this platform is 
10 meters tall is where our platform is. All right, his velocity up here is a zero. And what it wants to know at this point is this. It wants to know the diver's velocity at this point. Well, this point is at the halfway point. And that's what it asks us. Well, I'm going to do something. Every time I work one of these problems, I like to do this. Y initial. My Y initial, I just always make zero at this point. So wherever the problem starts, I say, therefore, my Y initial is zero. So what is my Y final? Well, he fell five meters. So my Y final is negative five. I'm going to ask you a question. Work net. Here's our equation. Conservation of energy. Not created, not destroyed. What kind of work is being done? Is there a gigantic rubber band slinging him into the water? There's really no air resistance. He's not wearing a parachute. No one is pushing him into the water. He's not wearing a jet pack. He's just simply falling. What kind of work is that? Well, he's changing elevation. That's gravity. So work done by gravity is... Believe it or not, there, that's this problem. The physics is over. There is all your physics for this problem. You just wrote the equation. Oh, we can expound the opponent now. MGY initial minus MGY final equals one half MV square minus one half MVO square. But now, this is what's beautiful, and it happens when you do this problem a lot. Y initial was zero. VO was zero. We've marked off half of this problem. And so, oh, cool. Our masses cancel. We're left with negative GY final equals one half V square. And that's all we're left with. And it asks us to find his velocity after he's fell uh, five meters. Find, come da, 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 find the speed. So all we have to do is negative 9.8 times y is negative 5 equals 1 half of v squared. So all we have to do is come in here and plug in these numbers. Negative 5 times negative 9.8. 5 times 9.8. Negatives cancel. Hmm, 49 times 2 is 98. So we've got 98 is equal to v squared. Take a square root. Square root of 98 is going to be basically almost 10, 9.89. So 9.9 .9 meters per second. And there's his velocity. And all we did was use that one equation to get us there. That's what's so good about these. Now for part B, it just says, well I'm not even going to work it. For part B it says find his speed at this point. Well, if you want to find the diver's speed here, just change y final to negative 10. That's going to be it. So you're going to end up going back to here. Instead of negative 9.8 times negative 5, it'd just be times negative 10. So you get 98 times 2. Take your square root. What? 14. Let's see what the difference is. So that would be 98 times 2. Square root answer. I said 14. The answer is, oh my goodness, it's 14. And no, I did not cheat. My brain is legitimately that. Well, anyway. Ah, so, now that I've finished talking about me for a second, let's go and let's do another problem. Let's do at least two problems on this video. Uh, now, this unit's got a bunch of questions in it. I'm not even done working the examples yet. It takes forever to get through this. Let's take a look at this next question in our problems. It's one by a sled and a rider weigh 800. They move down a frictionless hill. Uh, use energy to find speed at the bottom of the hill. And it says the rider pushes off with initial speed of 5. Okay. So let's take this problem and break it down. We've got a rider sled on a hill. So let's do this. It tells me that the sled and the rider draw my little sledder up here. It says that they have a weight of 800 newtons up there. And we're really not needing their, oops, we're really not needing their weight up here. But what we can do is 800 divided by 9.8, 
And if you don't know what I'm doing, that's W equals mg. We're just using the weight equation. So divide that weight by 9.8, and we've got a mass of, yes, that's the bell. I'm in a school, and it's summertime, and the bells still ring. So anyway, M is equal to, we've got 81.6 kilograms, 82. Anyway, so 81.6. It says that this hill is another magically 10 meter tall hill. All right. Here's one thing that's kind of different from a problem we did earlier like this. This one says that this rider at the top, VO, is equal to 5. This rider gives himself a push off at the top. And what the problem wants to know is what is the velocity at the bottom of the hill? Well, even though this problem may look harder, it's not harder. Before I even write my first equation, I want to take care of my y's. I'm going to call this point up here my y initial. And I always, it's just me, I always call y initial zero. Which means, go down this hill, what is my y final? Well, he fell, he fell 10 meters. So y final is negative 10 meters. Okay, well, we've kind of got that taken care of now. All right, so let's just go to this. Work net. I'm going to work every problem the rest of this chapter using this one equation. What's the only kind of work being done? Yeah, I know he pushed at the top, but it's just it didn't give us forces or distances. It just we're going to assume pretty much he just gets this initial 5. So the push, don't let that confuse you on this one, although I could see where it would at that point. But anyway, this problem, what's the only force, what's the only type of work being done? Well, he's going up or down. There's no springs. There's no friction. He's just simply going down a hill. So the only kind of work is work being done by gravity. And really, the physics is over. When I write this, this is the physics. We've got an MGY initial minus MGY final equals one-half MV squared minus one-half MVO squared. And now, unlike the last problem we did, we only get to mark out one thing across here. MGY initial, we get to mark that out. Because we've got a VO, we're looking for that V, we've got a Y final. Although we can do one thing. If you look, mass, 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 all our masses cancel out. So we've got negative GY final equals one half V square. We could factor out the one halves. One half VO square. And yes, if you've got any attention, you will notice that when we work a problem like this, the equation basically turns into the third kinematic equation is all it's turning into. That is literally all this is. If you look at it, factor out the half times by 2, GY, acceleration, distance, it's a kinematic equation is all this is. But anyway, we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. Negative 9.8 times what we got here y is negative 10 is y final equals uh, 1 half v square minus 1 half v o which was 5 so 5 square and now we can go through and kind of work this problem a little bit so we're going to have 98 uh, let's see here that's going to be positive 98 equals one half v square minus twenty five times a half that would be negative twelve point five so we end up with ninety eight plus twelve point five so that's one hundred and ten point eight equals one half v square let's just finish that so we will times by two since we are solving for a square tune tune uh term Take a square root of that answer, and the answer is 14.9 meters per second. Anyway, all right. 
So, there is our answer to question F. Okay, stay tuned for, I guess, Unit 5.3 Continued, Continued, the video. Thank you for watching.